Welcome everyone, we are September 2022 MBA candidates from IPMI. My name is Mirza Rahmat and as president I would like to share with you all about doing business in Indonesia. Very excited to inform you all as the fourth most populous country in the world, Indonesia is open to invite anyone to do business here. Our geographical position is strategic which connect Asia and Australia continents. We are in archipelago which consists of 17,000 islands and we have around 300 ethnic groups. And my VP in finance will give you more facts about Indonesia economy. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Meliani. As the VP in finance, I'm glad to tell you that Indonesia economy is the second fastest growing behind China compared to the all of the countries in G20. And we are predicted to be the 16th largest economy by nominal GDP. We suffered a financial crisis in 1997, but since then, our GDP growth is up to 6% until the COVID pandemic hit. Our economy has grown steadily with its abundance of natural resources, human capital, export, overseas investment, and technology development. Our VP in operation will explain that you all can start a business in Indonesia. Thank you, my fellow VP. My name is Hans Joshuara and I am happy to welcome you to start a business in Indonesia. As a newly industrialized country, Indonesia's growth rate is high and our nominal GDP per capita is relatively low, so businesses can thrive at lower costs. Indonesia's political environment, trade and business policies are also relatively stable, making it con a conducive environment to start and operate businesses. Our team of experts will give you the, op the overview of the opportunities the challenges, the do's and don'ts, how to start and where to get help. I will then give you to our business development team to tell you about the opportunities. Hi guys! Hello, how are you? Hi! Are you with Mahdito right now? Yes! Oh, okay. I would like to discuss about the business opportunity in Indonesia. What do you think, guys? I think uh, the first is let's start to the overview of Indonesian first Mahdito. As we know, Indonesia is the world's foremost populous country as a diverse and dynamic economy. Some of the key industries driving economic growth in Indonesia include manufacturing, agriculture, and services. The political and the regulatory environment for doing business in Indonesia can be complex, but with the right preparation and knowledge, foreign investors can find great success in the country. What do you think, Hanito? I'm going to share my view about growing middle class and consumer market. Over the past decade, Indonesia's middle class has expanded rapidly, with millions of people moving out of poverty and into middle class, rising disposable incomes and changing consumer preference over opportunities for innovative products and services. For example, Indonesian consumers are increasingly interested in health and wellness products, sustainable products, and technology-based solutions. I agree with your view. Another important aspect of Indonesian economy is infrastructure development. Indonesian government is investing heavily in infrastructure, including transportation, energy, and telecommunication. This creates an opportunity for foreign investors to partner with local companies or participate in government projects. For example, build new ports, airports, highways, and railways. I may add, Indonesia is rich in natural resources including coal, oil, and gas, minerals, and timber. This presents opportunities for companies in the extractive industries as well as in value-added processing and manufacturing. For example, investing in new mines, oil and gas fields, and timber processing facilities. However, it's important for foreign investors to understand the regulatory, the, the regulatory environment and local community dynamics before investing in the natural resources sector. How about the tourism industry? Can you explain very well? Sure, Ali. Indonesia tourism industry itself is growing rapidly with 100 million of both international and domestic tourism each year. The present, this is present opportunities for businesses in the hospitality, transportation, and also entertainment. For example, foreign company can invest in the new hotels, resorts, and theme parks. So we understand that Indonesia, diverse culture, and natural beauty make it an attractive destination for tourists around the world. 
guys, don't forget that we are in digital economy era. Indonesia is well known as a country which has a large active user base for e-commerce, social media, and mobile apps. It's growing rapidly. This presents opportunities for companies in digital marketing, e-commerce, and fintech. For example, investing in e-commerce platforms, digital payment systems, and mobile apps. So in summary, business opportunity in Indonesia is about population itself as a potential market, infrastructure development, natural resources, tourism industry, and also the digital economy. Good morning, Good morning bro. bro! Good morning! So we just saw that there are many huge opportunities of doing business in Indonesia, but there are also many challenges. Can anyone share some of their challenges? Me, Prof. I think bureaucracy is the biggest challenges, Prof, because Indonesia has a reputation of having a high level of bureaucracy, which can be challenged for businesses operating in this country. It obtains necessary license and permits to operate business licenses, environmental permits, and tax registration for local, provincial, national level. Bureaucracy can be slow, complex, and time-consuming for businesses. I think multiple levels of government regulations and requirements can create difficulties and delays, but the government has launched initiatives to improve the ease of doing business in the country. Prof. That's good. Um, so what other challenges besides the uh, bureaucracy? Uh, Melly, can you share? Yes, Prof. I think another challenge to do business in Indonesia is about tax system. There is a regional levels and national levels tax system classification. Indonesian companies have to make and submit their tax report the moment they get their tax ID number, even for a company with lack of business activity or profit. The monthly tax compliance in Indonesia range from corporate income tax, employee withholding tax, value added tax, and individual income tax. It takes 75 hours to process a 22% corporate income tax, plus 184 hours to handle social security contribution and VAT. Failure to comply with the system could result in serious penalty. That's why, to avoid dealing with tax auditing and other accounting, some companies consider using a third-party service in order to comply with the tax regulation. That's all, Prof. Very good point, Mel. I want to add, Prof, there is also challenge in limitation for an ownership investor in Indonesia such as one of which is the restriction of foreign shareholding not being able to own 100% of the company's shares. That means that they must find a local partner to hold the majority stake in the company. And the minimum capital for a foreign company is 10 billion rupiah. License requirements, certain types of business activities in Indonesia require special permits, such as trade permits, contract permits, or import-export permits. The license can be difficult and time-consuming to obtain. Business license for PMA are issued by OSS agency on behalf of the minister or head of a non-ministerial government agency, which is the authority of the central government. That's it, Prof. I think that's a very good uh, point, Zenda. And Yuna, do you agree with your friends? Uh, yeah, I agree, Prof. And I would also like to add that we must not forget the uh, challenges that is coming from the complexity of the market itself. I mean, starting from the uneven population dispersion, which leads to an equal uh, regional economic development, and then the lack of infrastructures and the low skill of our human labors. And I think for some global trend and demand, when it comes to here, it will need to be localized due to the difference in cultural acceptance from one area to another in here. So those are the uh, challenges in markets and cultural system in Indonesia, which I believe uh, in the uh, investment, if there is an investor trying to make some business in Indonesia, this will need to be overcome and handled. All of you made very good explanations. There is one big uh, major challenge. Can anyone guess what it is? Maybe corruption, Prof? 
Yes, that's right, Zender. Corruption is the major challenge. Corruption has been a pervasive problem in the Indonesian society, both in the public and private sector. The Corruption Perception Index of Indonesia in 2022 is 22 out of 100. This makes us one third of the most corrupt countries in the world. And this continues to be a hindrance in business operations in Indonesia. According to the Indonesian Survey Institute, majority of the bribes came from the mining and the construction sector. The lowest came from the finance sector. The government has taken uh, actions to eradicate corruption uh, with the uh, Corruption Eradication Commission, but corruption is still a major challenge. Research shows that firms that uh, pay bribes, they often lose time, inefficiencies, and suffer loss of profits. And for large global firms, this poses serious legal risks. So it's been a great discussion, guys. Um, so to overcome these challenges, I think we need to explore next about the do's and don'ts of uh, doing business. Business market and regulations can change rapidly in Indonesia. We need to consider the risk of failure and the benefits if we succeed. We must be knowledgeable about the law, regulations, and responsibilities, especially regarding the business entity, legal documents, tax, financial reports, and human resources. Do consider working with professionals to mitigate the risk. Don't expect that the financing process and the stability of business will be simple and quick. We need to project our business plan from every aspect and be adaptable in every issue. Having the right mindset. You don't rush into things without knowing uh, the business idea is lucrative. Next, balance is crucial in, in life. Running the business should be something that you love. Plan everything, keeping your eyes on your competitor, develop the best version uh, of the business. Don't have the wrong mindset and make, make risky choice. For instance, scale rapidly or invest more than you can afford. Also, don't burn your step out committing to more than your capability physical and mental. Don't stack your witness when compared to the competitor. Be proactive and innovative to grow the business. Once you set up a company in Indonesia and consider delegating foreign staff or hiring expatriates, ensure the requirement for living and working permits kitas for your foreign staff which will be stationed in Indonesia. Don't ignore this requirement or postpone completion of this requirement because it may lead to penalty or it may cause business risk if affecting to the top management position. Foreign businesses must be registered as PT PMA or Foreign Investment and obtain investment approval from the Investment Coordinating Board. Minimum capital requirements are 10 billion rupiah. And EMB is essential for investors who want to start a business in Indonesia and is it the landlord or building owner's responsibility to secure the permit. Don't forget to register your company to consultant service especially regarding the licensing issues. Is it prohibited to establish a company with a capital of less than 10 billion rupiah and to use property without an EMB, which can lead to suffer penalties. Okay, our group will explain about the step by step of making a company in Indonesia. The first step is to decide the structure of own company in Indonesia which is consists a shareholder. A shareholder is every limited liability company in Indonesia must have at least two shareholder. They can be individual, corporate shareholder or both. In shareholder there are commissioner and director. They are appointed at least one commissioner and one director. The commissioner is a supervisor of the director and can be non-resident. And then the director are in charge of the daily operation of the company. At least one of them should be a citizen or a resident of Indonesia and must have a tax card. The second step is to consult our experts about what kind of sector business in Indonesia. 
It is known as the Indonesian Standard Industrial Classification or KBLI in Indonesia. The third step is to decide the business domicile. Due to Indonesia having huge areas, which for each area will have different rules for the registered address. It is important to choose your business location before starting the registration process. For example, in Jakarta, the address must have a building permit that allows the operation of an office. Document preparation and submission. The required documents are only identification cards, KTP applicable for locals, and KITAS is required for foreigners, and the registration of Indonesian tax ID and PWP, which is required to secure business licenses, open bank account, and fulfill tax obligation. And make sure you submitted your documents uh, aligned with the latest regulation. Then, we must draft our application letter with all the required documents addressed to the related government bodies which is under Ministry of Law and Human Rights of Indonesia. Incorporation process and approval For a company to start business operation in Indonesia, it needs a NIB, number business entity. The corporation must acquire a legalized deed notary as a legal entity to start the business. The company entity have to be approved by Ministry of Law and, and Human Rights. The company has to secure other license. Some sector in the business activity require more specific business licenses and permit. For example, the mining company need, to, need the permit to open pit and open a mine in, in a certain area. And for the fishery industry, it requires a fishing permit for the company to go fish in the Indonesian sea. So it's all depending on your business. The process may take from 7 to 20 days. If you need help, you can find out in the next chapter. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went to Garden and surely they're making this as well. 
better. Yeah. Leather jacket, leather vest, leather shoes. And the quality is really high. Yeah, the price is really high. And let's see. Yeah, if we can manage it, it's yes. high, right? Actually, but, uh, but unfortunately, the ones that are made in Indonesia are sold using international brands. So it's not under Indonesian brands. We are doing only that manufacturers. Yes. Craftman, here in Indonesia. So we have to push it. Yeah. From that global. Yes. DDD. <laughs> Maybe you can use M more as a company. Actually, the project is uh, doing that dance also. So they are uh, making formats from the Cambodia and they are selling it to the worldwide. So you see a mask in Asia. Yeah, I've heard it too. I mean, like, this is a big idea. <laughs> so, how we would have started? I mean, like, how we make some business in Asia and they go to Of course, what we have seen that is, of course, by contact the government, for instance. And see what are the resources available because we have to start somewhere, right? Uh, that's right. Yeah, that, that's so, so many government that's to true. reach out. Yeah, exactly. So that's my question actually. Like, where do we start? Because there's a lot of different programs and institutes and everything. It can be very overwhelming. You know? <laughs> yes. And we can ask them to get to it. Straight to the boss. Yes. <laughs> I'm Yuna Davina. I'm Zeta Davina. 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 I'm Yuna Davina. I